Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. I greet the whole church with the peace of the Lord. I would like to invite those that can to stand up. In reverence to reading the word, which is located in the book of John. Chapter 20, from verse 11. John 20. I'm going to begin to read from verse 11. It's here in the projection. Amen. And the Bible says the following. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white uh, sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken my, away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Woman, who are you uh, seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabbi, which is to say teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me. Mary Magdalene came, and verse 18, came and told uh, the, the disciples that she had seen the Lord and, and that he had spoken these things to her. My brethren, like always, in every one of our services, the sub subject of the night is to speak about Jesus. Because this subject always m moves our hearts. Our pleasure, our joy is to speak of the things that, the, that Jesus has done for us. We could have stayed here the whole night uh, telling stories about what he had done, that his miracles that he had performed, the cures of his word, his message. It was a message that was a new message speaking of a new kingdom. We could also s speak of uh, the moment in which he fed the multitude. We could speak of the wonders performed by Jesus. We could stay the whole night here giving examples and the word of the things that he had done. But tonight we're going to speak of a one uh, miracle that Jesus, that God has done in the life of Jesus. What is the uh, gift of wonders? It's something that there is no explanation for. It's something that God does to show his great power. They're going to speak tonight about the resurrection of Jesus. Because the resurrection of Jesus is something that uh, marked the life of the evangelicals. Lives, uh, lives a mark in the life of the church. Because from that moment on, uh, everything began for the church. The message of the church is about this act. The message of the 
to church, it begins through a tomb that is empty. Jesus died, but on the third day he raised from the dead, and today he is living among us. And this is the message that reaches our hearts. This is the message that to this day it changes our destiny, changes our luck. Because there would not be a church if it would not if it were not for this act of Jesus, we would not be here. We would not have a, a truthful message, we would be here telling lies. But for the fact that Jesus was risen from the dead, now we can say with a loud voice that we are new creatures. Because the resurrection of Jesus represents this. It represents the moment in which the church overcomes all things, the moment in which the church is able to reach what is eternal. It uh, reaches eternity with God. It's, it is through this act of, of this wonder that God operated in the life of Jesus. And Jesus, he didn't die by chance. Jesus was not defeated. Jesus is not also a hero that for, fought for a cause, that fought for a movement. No. Jesus, he defeated the death. He kill, Jesus killed death. Have you thought about this? Jesus killed death. Jesus defeated our greatest enemy. He didn't do this by chance. He didn't do this because he was fighting, uh, he was fighting a cause. He did this because he accepted. He took on a commitment with the Father, a commitment that he alone could have uh, taken on, a commitment that he alone could have executed. And Jesus died in man's place. And that death was not for Jesus. It was for the evil doers. The cross that was prepared there was not for Jesus. But Jesus never broke any law. Jesus was not a criminal. He was not an evil doer. He was he was wronged. And he died in a cross that was not his. He was buried in a tomb that it was not his. Did you know that? Jesus was placed in a tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. It was a borrowed tomb. It was placed there. And this is all to show to us what Jesus did and what he did is, was for us. Jesus' death was to replace our death. And the tomb that he was placed in it's a place that one day we would eventually be. But in Jesus, we are more than victorious. In Jesus, we are victorious. because That's why the church, I said this before, the church doesn't fight for victory. The church fights with the victory at hand already. The church fights no, already knowing that tomorrow, today, or the day after, we are going to have a victory because we are privileged people. We are people that have been chosen by God, has been chosen by God. And Jesus was victorious in our behalf. Jesus didn't fight for a cause, but he fought for our souls. And a high price was paid for our souls. And many times this act of Jesus is misunderstood. Many people look at it and they just stay on the story of the death of Jesus of what it was his pers personality his years here on earth and many people most people they just 
stop on the death and where Jesus stayed. And this is the case of this woman, Mary of Magdalene. And the Bible says that she stayed with Jesus. She heard, she was a testimony. She, with her own eyes, she saw the miracles of Jesus. She saw when Jesus said he was going, to, he needed to die. Jesus never denied this. He never deceived anybody. He, he said this to his disciples. Uh, his mission, what he came here to do. And now Mary, when Jesus dies, and she goes to visit the place where the body of Jesus had been placed. And she brings uh, some perfumes and spices because that's that was a common thing back then. People would go to visit their bodies. It was an act of um, giving an homage to go there and, and maybe remembering the good times and maybe the sad moments that they lived together. And that woman, she had everything, or every reason to cry for Jesus' loss because Jesus transformed her life. Jesus delivered her in a wonderful way. She had a, a life that was completely lost she was rejected by everyone but Jesus with his way of understanding people of hearing and comprehending people Jesus saw in her what she had which was the most important thing which was not her sin but was her soul that she carried which was a heart that needed blessing was a life that was dying, not for this life, but was, she was dying an eternal death. That's why Jesus helped her. That's why Jesus stretched his hand to help her, to remove her from the place where she was and placing her on a, on a path that would lead to eternity. And she was very thankful for this. And now she was, for sure, crying. The Bible says that she was crying. I don't even know if she was able to sleep those nights, thinking, rem remembering, and at the same time telling to herself, everything is over. That Jesus that I was waiting for, I was expecting to be the Messiah, that Jesus, the friend, the one that heard me, that used to listen to me, the, the one who gave me good advice, now he's gone. And that's why she went there with the, the spices, the perfumes. She was there confirming and accepting and accepting the death of Jesus. She was just um, coming to the conclusion that Jesus was just another person that passed by her life, uh, someone that came and died and there are many people there that are like this. You hear the message of Jesus, they have an experience with Jesus, that felt in their heart the touching of the Lord Jesus, they have felt the burning of, of the Holy Spirit in their lives, they may have been cured sometimes, and they may have heard the voice of Jesus, they heard Jesus speaking, in particular, particularly with their lives, but now they are, they have accepted that Jesus is just a fed, something that, an experience uh, in their lives that uh, they came and passed. That's what this woman came to do. She was already, has, had already accepted the death of Jesus. That's why she went there. She even forgot that he had said that he was going to resurrect and when she get there and she finds the uh, empty tomb, the open tomb and the stone removed, she did not even think that he could have been reasoned. I and mean, she speaks with the angels. She speaks like if someone was there and she was asking, where is the body of my master? Have you taken it? She was thinking that Jesus was the one that people that can take 
uh, back and forth, carry, place on a, on a, on a spot, put on around your neck and carry around. People think that, but those are people that don't have a commitment with eternity. They don't have, don't have a commitment with what is eternal. They just have a commitment with the history of Jesus, the story of Jesus. And now when she is called, firstly, she was called as a woman. And the Bible says that God always compares the church with a woman. Because the word says that Jesus, he will get married with the church. And the church is as compared to the bride and Jesus compa compared to the groom. And now he's speaking about the woman, it's like generally speaking, she didn't understand that it was Jesus. There are many people that are inside of the church that consider themselves members of church, but they don't understand where Jesus is. People that live with the Bible in their hands, that always talk about God, people that always make mention of the operation of God, but only in their memories and not what is real. It is, it's nothing to do with their daily lives, but they speak of the past. And they say that Jesus, yeah, you operated miracles. One day he cured my life. He blessed me. He blessed my home. He blessed my material things. One day I prayed and I, uh, the doors of heaven opened up. I was cured, but they don't understand that being in Jesus and living salvation in Jesus is much more than in a Sunday, leaving a home, going to church, sing a couple of songs, and leaving, and then thinking that everything is all right. That's why she was called, when she was called woman, she didn't doesn't understand. She was not awoken to this. But when Jesus calls her by her name, Mary, and at that very moment, she recognized who was speaking to her. She stops and she said, Rabboni, which means master and teacher. And at that moment, she was able to glorify the Lord. Why was she able to recognize him when she was called by the name? Because Jesus, salvation Jesus is this. Salvation Jesus is individual. It's your call. It's your name. It's when the Lord set you aside. When you know, the Lord among your whole family and in the middle of a multitude Jesus looks at you and call you by name and at this moment that you recognize that God is the owner of all things he is the only one that can hear your prayer that's why that's why Jesus called her by her name and at that instant religion, history, everything was left behind. At that moment, she was set aside. It was like if she had been carried, she would, had been removed from a great multitude, and now only Jesus and her were having a conversation. Now imagine this, this picture. She was called to be in the presence of Jesus. No longer that Jesus that had revealed to her had shown to her in a different way in his physical body. This, this Jesus preacher, the Jesus that went towards her, the Jesus that performed miracles, but now the Jesus that was revealed, a Jesus that had a glorified body, the Jesus that a body of, a, of victorious, a Jesus with the body that had overcome all things. That's why when the Lord calls us, that's when Jesus sets us as aside. He removes us from the place where we were. It is because this meeting, it makes uh, a mark in our lives. And that's why the Lord is calling many here. Because God does not see our flaws. He doesn't see who we are. But He sees only one thing. If there is here, are, there is in need, a soul that is dying, a soul that is in suffering, it is for you. 
that Jesus entered here tonight. It is for you that he has overcome all things. It is for you because one day you were born, because one day we were placed in this world, and it's for you that Jesus is calling you by your name to show to you that he knows you, and he knows you very well. He wants to talk to you in a very personal way, because every time you will pray to the Lord, he is the one who hears you. Every time you pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, He is the one is, that is on the right side of the Father and just sitting for you. He is the one who is saying, Father, answer her prayer because it, it is for her that I die. It is for her that a, a, a high price was paid for. And if I was victorious, it was because of this person. My brother, tonight the Lord has brought us here for that reason only, to show us that the story of Jesus is a wonderful story. But we need to live not only the story, but we need to accept what is beyond the story. And this is salvation, it's complete salvation in Jesus. We cannot only be reminded of what Jesus has done, but we need to live what he is doing every day in our lives. And for this, the Lord has brought you here tonight. You didn't enter here in vain. We didn't enter here because you just you didn't have anything else, anything better to do. But you may have entered here with another thing in your mind, but it was the Holy Spirit who brought you here so that you may give um, worth to what is eternal. Because what, what you have, we all have, we have something that is precious to God. We have our, our souls that one day was given by God, that was lent by God to us. We have to give account to this. So inside of us, there is this, this pleading, is this, is this pain, is the uh, interior struggle between the soul and the flesh. The flesh wants to say, and the soul wanting to go back to the Father. That's why, my brethren, the Lord has brought you here, because He wants you to accept this, that you may live the, the story of Jesus, that you may let go of uh, the human understanding, maybe something that was given to you f f by your parents, and maybe wrongfully, but tonight you need to understand one thing, that Jesus is, is here, because you was victorious and you are not here because you lost you're here because you are victorious together with Jesus and here tonight he's calling you by your name come right open up your heart and say God I want this blessing S speak like Mary said Rabboni teacher and understand and receive the Lord as the only Savior of your life. May the Lord bless us. Let us close our eyes. Let us hear a song that for sure will speak very well to our hearts.
the Lord is present in this place. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There is no one else like our God. It is with Him that we want to live. Because He is the only one that can take us to a place that no, no other can take, which is to be in the arms of our God. Let us stand up. Let us have a word of adoration to the Lord. Lord, we praise you. Because it's very good to hear a sweet voice speaking to our hearts. How wonderful God is to hear, to feel the touch of the Spirit. We're so small in your presence. We don't deserve so much love, so much care that you has given us. Every time we enter in your house, we can feel the operation of the Lord truly in this place. Lord, we praise it because the deeds of the Lord are beautiful in among us. We praise you, God, because your word speaks to our heart in a wonderful way. Lord, we praise you because it's very good to be in your house. It's very good to be to feel your presence. Lord, we praise you because you are wonderful. Because you're the one that does not look to our flaws in order to visit our lives. That's why with tears and tears of joy that because we serve a God that is wonderful. A living God. A God that has made our lives become better in our presence and we recognize that you alone is God there is no other God that's why we give you all our worship and our gratitude for everything that you has done in the midst of your church everything that you has done in our behalf everything that you ought to do because we know that you are going to do more to those that seek you in truth and we praise in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord, we want tonight praise your name. We want, Lord, with one voice alone to exalt and give glories to your name because you are mighty. You are everything for us, God. We would not be here if it were not for your presence. We would not be anybody if it were not your great love, the grace of the Lord, the mercy of God that one day was able to reach us. We want tonight, want to give you all our gratitude because if we are here, Lord, it is because the Lord has been with us. Accept our adoration and the song that we sang, the glorification that were made. Lord, all the acts of the service, Lord, that you may turn it into blessings to each one of us. Reach our family members, whatever they are, Lord, that your spirit may move in their hearts and that your spirit may bless them in a great way. And all of us may sing in one voice alone to say, say that we are waiting for the coming of your son, Jesus. That's why we want to be with you in eternity to live with you, to walk with you. May we have a week of victory in your presence that you may send your angels to go ahead of us, breaking the barriers, 
give us victory. And the prayer that we uh, make in the name of Jesus. And your name, we say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. We are coming to the end of the service. And if you desire a prayer, assistance, we are here at your disposal. I would like to remind you that our next service will be on Wednesday. The service, the women's service, where those that want to be, be pre present. That's been a blessing, the meeting of women meeting. The Lord has operated and manifested, has been brought great joy to our hearts. And on Thursday, we have a special message for the month. On Thursday, I've been praying for the pastors. So those that want, we will all be here together, bringing a special message for the church. Peace of the Lord.